Hello Guardians, welcome back to Destiny's Tracker. My name is KillerB61, and today we are going through how to get your beta code from Bungie.net. So, you're going to do like so, go to Bungie.net, sign in of course, then go to My Legend up in the upper left hand corner. Then, once you're there, you're going to click on Codes. That will take you to the screen to choose which platform you need your code with. Then it will generate a code to use on that platform. I'm on Xbox One, so I redeemed my code there, then downloaded the code and was able to boot the beta right up. Servers aren't on yet, obviously, but it still feels good to try. I mean, listen to this music, it's delicious. To download the beta, you will need a considerable amount of space on your hard drive. For the Xbox One, I needed to clear out 12.8 gigabytes of space to download it, so be aware of that. Now, let's take a look at the TWAB for this week. We have much, much more to talk about for sure, but let's just touch on this for a second. The This Week at Bungie report mainly just talks about the beta and what will be available. Uh, how to download the beta like we just talked about and what to expect as far as beta performance. So they first talk about the six subclasses that will be available in the beta. We have the Striker, Sentinel, Dawnblade, Voidwalker, Arcstrider, and Gunslinger subclasses that will be available to play on launch day of the beta. And they said the top set of perks will be unlocked and available for all of the subclasses, making the bottom perk tree something we will have to wait till September to experience for the first time. Next, we talk about how they want us to submit our feedback to them. For a lot of us, this will be the first time we get to play the game, and Bungie wants to hear what we think about it. So they have created a section in the forums titled Feedback for us to submit all of our thoughts on the beta. They also want you to report any issues to the hashtag help forum. Keep in mind this is a beta, so you should definitely expect a fair amount of networking issues, overpowered weapons and abilities, and just be ready for anything is what we're trying to say. Moving on now, I want to talk about a few things I didn't really notice until I rewatched some of the IGN gameplay footage of Vostok, the new PvP map version of the Iron Temple. First thing is about the discussion there has been about these European-style weapons we've been seeing. Some people have been calling them exotics, which seems to be very far from the truth. It seems to me that this may be a new weapon foundry, since we have almost a complete weapon set in that style of engineering. We've seen an auto rifle, a scout rifle, a pulse rifle, possibly a shotgun, and now a sniper rifle, all sporting this modern-day European military look. I think these guns look awesome. That's part of why I uh, like the hockey weapons so much. They just have a more military look and seem more aggressive to me, which I like. So hopefully this brand of weapon will be something that will fare quite well in the Crucible. Because I like the way they look, now I want to like the way they play. Another thing I wanted to talk about that I didn't see until now is this Guardian here. Jumped in the air and was about to miss the ledge, but then grappled up onto the ledge. I can't believe I didn't notice this the first time I watched this, and I'm even wondering if this was in the build playable at the D2 reveal, and I just missed it there too, because I played a few matches, and not once did I or anyone else around me say, hey, check out this new trick I can do. Awesome! I like new mobility changes in any game, and to see mobility changes coming to Destiny, a game that I absolutely love, is a welcome sight. It also seems like the Titan is moving way faster than he was in the D2 reveal Affle build. Here he's Titan skating, and we weren't able to do this very well at the, the reveal, so it's interesting to note that maybe there was a boost in player speed or something like that. We did see shoulder charge for the first time, finally, and it has been dialed back quite a lot. So you can see in the gameplay shown, the player uses shoulder charge and the Guardian is brought to half health, which as we all know too painfully well, when you get hit by shoulder charge now, you get slapped into like the next map or something. The Titan here is also using double lightning grenades, so run for your lives because the Titans are coming for all of you and we brought enough grenades for everyone. This is super cool and super scary at the same time because double lightning grenades is just too much for one person to handle. It really is. 
Uh, while on the topic of grenades, we have to point out that the Void Wall Grenade is now available for the Sentinel Titans to take advantage of. We see this deployed clearly here. All of these changes here, I think, are really interesting to see weapons from other classes make it into another subclass. It will be cool to see how they make use of these new ability combos. The last thing I want to talk about is something that Mark Noseworthy said in a tweet, and I want to give credit to Rick Kakis at Kakis HD since he is the one who told me about this. I love his stuff. I suggest you go check him out. But what he pointed out was this. We see screenshots here of each of the classes holding elemental energy in their hands, representing the different energy types, the ones missing, the missing subclasses right now. Here we have the Hunter holding Void, the Titan here is holding Solar Energy, the Warlock is holding Arc Energy. So what this tells us is some type of third subclass uh, for the missing elements is in development, and we will see them eventually. But something cool happened today. Someone tweeted out to Mark Noseworthy, the project lead for Destiny 2. The tweet said this, When are you guys going to announce Night Stalker? As a Hunter main, I'm feeling underwhelmed right now and probably switching to Titan. To which Mark replied as follows, There are many things we are not going to announce or reveal before September 6th. We want the community to have new memories of Discovery together. And this reply says a lot. What it does not say is Night Stalker confirmed. We're not saying that here. But what it does say, and again, I'm crediting Rick Kakis here because he's the one that brought this up. But Mark Noseworthy, and I bet the rest of them, all the developers at Bungie, has been asked this question many times. And as a company, if we look at this from the point of view of Bungie as a company, they probably don't want to talk about things that specifically won't be in the game. They wouldn't want to respond vaguely to a question like this because it would give the impression that there is something in the works. And why would you do that if you don't want to piss people off? So what this probably means is something is there for us to find. And they don't want to tell us what it is yet. They want us to find it on launch day while we play the game. Now, I could be giving them too much credit. And there could be nothing in which case I would cry. But I think Bungie is smarter than that. Especially with things like this. Everything they say, do, eat, and breathe in the public forum has a meaning. I mean, even the jackets they wear have Easter eggs in them. So it wouldn't be like them to tweet something out hinting at something that might not exist. So my theory is this. They want us to have a moment similar to what we had in The Taken King when we unlocked our third subclass. But even better this time. Because when we went on those missions, we knew, or at least I knew, that I was getting a subclass by the end of this mission. I even knew what it was. So imagine the feeling of doing a mission and you're not expecting that at the end of that mission you're going to be getting a new subclass. And you don't know what that subclass is either. You're just given a ball of lightning and you get to experience something completely foreign to you that moment will probably be the best thing that happens in the whole game honestly since getting a new super is huge it is something that will change everything about how you play the rest of the game so you will remember the adventure getting it and exploring everything about it ladies and gentlemen that is my time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like at the bottom to let us know. And we would be so happy if you joined our community of awesome guardians by subscribing to the channel and clicking the little bell icon at the bottom so you can be a part of the notification squad and never miss another DTR video again. Before I sign out here, I just want to let you guys know that episode 2 of our Machinima Lore series is out now. So we would love it if you guys go check that out. Leave a like, comment, let us know what you think. Once again, my name is KillerB61. Have a great day, Guardian, and I will see you in the next one.